Okay, so let's see how much you actually understand about triangles. Because if you know a very important formula, probably the most important formula about triangles, well, this will be a very easy problem. So here is our triangle, and this side is 10, and this side is 8, and we're looking for the length of this missing side, which is x. Now, uh, in our triangle, we have this symbol right here in the corner, and hopefully this means something to you. But uh, I'm not going to tell you what this means right now, but this is a big clue. Now, there's a couple of different ways to solve this problem, but really there is only one best way that involves this formula. Now, feel free to use a calculator, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. So what is this missing side? Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. Well, the missing side, this side right here, is 6. Okay, so that is the answer. And what was the formula that I was talking about? Well, it's the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to talk about that here in a second. But basically, that's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So if this is what you were thinking about and you got this answer, well, listen, you definitely deserve a nice little happy face and a plus plus a 100% and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Great job, okay? So anyways, when it comes to uh, mathematics, and I'm talking about, uh, well, let's say, middle school level and beyond, all right, you're definitely going to want to know this formula. Matter of fact, a lot of you out there aren't even math students. Maybe just checking out this video just caught your eye. A lot of uh, people in all sorts of different jobs use the Pythagorean theorem all the time. They don't even realize they're using it. Things like uh, construction workers and stuff like that. Anybody dealing with right angles, okay, are using this formula all day long. And that what's really key here is that this is a triangle, but it's not just a regular triangle. This happens to be a special type of triangle. It's what we call a right triangle. We can see that by this little box in a corner. Anytime you see a triangle and has a little like square, a little box in that corner like that, that indicates that this is a right triangle, meaning that this angle is 90 degrees. So anytime you have a triangle, a right triangle specifically, you can use this formula. Now, I said there was a couple different approaches to this problem. Well, you could use trigonometry to solve this problem, but that's kind of like, you know, uh, kind of going the long and fancy path in order to solve this. The easiest, most direct path to uh, solve um, a right triangle problem when it comes to the uh, lengths of the sides is using the Pythagorean theorem. And let's go ahead and take a good look at that now. Okay, so again, here is our problem. We recognize, oh, this is a right triangle. I'm trying to find a side, a missing side in a right triangle. Automatically, you should be thinking Pythagorean theorem. And that is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. But what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that now. Okay, so in a triangle, there's three sides, all right? A, B and C. What you really need to be paying attention to is C. What side is C? That's what really counts, okay? C is the longest side. It's called the hypotenuse, all right? So if you look at this triangle, what's the longest side? It's this side. And if you don't really, uh, if you can't really see that, it's always the side opposite of the right angle, okay? So the side opposite, but you, you kind of uh, hopefully should be obvious, you know, visually to the eye. This is the longest side, so that's always your C. Your A and B can, is the other sides of the right triangle. So this, the shortest side and this middle side is the A and B. It doesn't make a difference if you put this as B and this as A, but it does make a huge difference if you don't have uh, the longest side as C. So uh, once you um, understand that, then basically the Pythagorean theorem uh, has this you know, obvious relationship, and that is this. If we square this side, okay, this middle side right here, a squared, and then we add it to the square of this, let's say the shorter uh, side right there, that's going to be equal to the sum of these things. If I add these up, it's going to be equal to the square of this longest side, the square of the hypotenuse, right? So if we have a right triangle and we know the Pythagorean theorem, we can find the length of any of these sides. Of course, you're going to have to know some basic algebra, but that's not that difficult. So let's go ahead and apply the Pythagorean theorem 
right now to solve this problem. Now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. Now, we are talking about uh, geometry in this uh, particular video. And if you really want to learn geometry from me, check out these courses right here. You can find links to them uh, in the description of this video. So I teach uh, basic geometry in my pre-algebra course. But uh, if you are taking like a full comprehensive one-year geometry course, well, then check out my full geometry course, right? I teach pretty much everything in this course to include proofs. And then also, if you just kind of want to review some geometry and other basic math skills and algebra, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to the problem. Okay, so here is um, uh, our triangle. We're told that this side is 8, this side is 10. So our longest side, 10, is C, okay, in terms of what variable it represents. Okay, so C is equal to 10. This side we'll call A, and then this side would be B, A, uh, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, and B is equal to X. It's the same thing. We could use the variable B, but let's just let B equal to X. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, I'm just going to kind of uh, keep it like this so we can easily see this formula in action. All right, so what's A squared? Well, it's going to be 8 squared. So we're going to start plugging in these values for this formula. So 8 squared, okay, and then we're going to add that to B squared. So what's B? Well, B is equal to X, so that's going to be X squared, and that's going to be equal to C squared, which, of course, is 10 squared. So now we just go ahead and do some nice basic algebra, nothing too difficult. So 8 squared is what? 64. 8 times 8 is 64, plus X squared is just X squared, and 10 squared is what? 100. All right, 10 times 10. So now I need to go ahead and solve this basic quadratic equation. Or what we want to do here is get the x squared on one side of the equation. So I can subtract 64 from both sides of the equation, and I'm left with x squared is equal to 36. So if you don't understand this right here, this is just basic, um, a basic quadratic equation, and uh, you don't even have to know how to solve all quadratic equations in order to uh, use the Pythagorean theorem, just, you know, basic quadratic equations. So we're down to x squared is equal to 36. I want to solve for x, so how can I find x? Just take the square root of both sides of the equation. The square root of x squared is x, and that's what I want, right? And the square root of 36 is both positive and negative 6. So, i.e., x is equal to 6 and negative 6. But we are talking about distance here. So that negative 6 isn't going to work for us. So we'll throw out that negative distance. So the answer is 6. Okay? And that's basically it. I mean, the Pythagorean theorem is just one of these formulas that you want to put into your long-term memory. Okay? A squared plus B squared is equal to c squared. I mean, this is, um, uh, I can't overstate the importance of this formula in mathematics, not only in geometry and trigonometry and practical applications, it's used everywhere. So hopefully you recognize that this was an application of the Pythagorean theorem, but if you didn't, now you know, and that's the whole idea behind my videos. I'm trying to teach you math. Hopefully you get something out of it. And if this little video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need more help with triangle problems, things like this, uh, geometry, basic geometry, and the like, well, let me uh, suggest two courses. One, I have a full, complete geometry course, which, of course, will teach you everything you need to know about geometry. But I also cover basic geometry, um, like area, surface area, Pythagorean theorem, uh, things like that in my pre-algebra course as well. So those would be two good courses. Now, if you're beyond that, if you're more advanced into trigonometry and everything else, then you might want to check out my pre-calculus course. And, uh, of course, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel as well. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.